after a couple of months of using this bag. Today, I'm going to be doing an in-depth review on one of the most iconic bags by the row their banana bag which is really an icon in its own right it single-handedly started a craze and a trend and while it's a bag that has been imitated by many brands both high and low i don't feel that it has been perfectly duplicated so if you ever wondered whether or not this weirdly shaped bag is truly worth all the hype then you came to the right place because today I'm going to be sharing everything that there is to know about this bag, including the pricing, the sizing, the styling, my experience owning and using this bag, and all the pros and cons that I think you need to be aware of before pulling the trigger. So if that sounds interesting to you, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. If you're a fan of the rope, but I feel like even if you're not, even if you just enjoy luxury fashion in general, this is a bag that will require no introduction because it has been insanely popular since its very launch. And I can definitely see why that is. I feel like it's hard to find something quite as effortless, easygoing, but also functional from a luxury brand. This bag is not only incredibly made, but as you would expect from the row, it is beautifully understated but there is something about it there is that je ne sais quoi touch where you keep looking at this bag and you cannot quite pinpoint what it is but there is something extremely luxurious about it which is what i love about this bag there isn't any obvious branding there isn't any sort of overwhelming hardware or any really intricate details but just the way this bag is put together, the materials used, the way this bag looks and feels, there is something unbelievably luxurious where you will not be able to take your eyes off of this piece. Now, I first bought the banana bag, I want to say two years ago, two and a half years ago, maybe when I first got pie, I wanted to get a bag for dog walking and I thought that this shape would make an amazing dog walking bag. But at the time, I could not find it in leather, so I ended up buying it in nylon, which I quickly returned, and I'll tell you exactly why that is. But speaking of the banana bag and the different sizes, in case you are not aware, the banana bag comes in two different sizes in leather, and there is or there was an additional size in nylon, which can be quite hard to find. If I can find the banana bag in stock anywhere online, which can be a challenge. I will make sure to have them listed in the info box for you. But the original banana bag was available in two different sizes. This was the small slouch banana bag as they called it. And then there was also a larger size, which I have not seen in stock in ages. It was a lot bigger than the small size. In fact, it almost looked like like a proper crossbody bag or a satchel. So the size difference was really quite large, but then the size in between was only available in nylon. And I think that was called the Banana 2, which as I mentioned, comes in a really lightweight nylon finish. I might as well just tell you why I ended up returning it. I bought it in an ivory color. I think it came in a few different colors. It came in black. It was also available in navy. I ended up picking it up in like a taupey color. And I think there might have also been a brown. Now the reason I returned the taupe one that I bought is because I felt that it looked quite cheap and it was way too comparable to one of the extremely well-known dupes of the banana bag which is the Uniqlo nylon bag which is a bag that I love I've had this for years I have used it I mean I couldn't tell you how many times I always take this with me whenever I go traveling because it is an extremely lightweight bag that I can throw on it doesn't really take away from any outfit it doesn't really add anything either but it is just a great bag to have in your collection so I feel like whether you're going to buy the banana bag or not this is a bag that everyone needs in their arsenal I think it's something like $20. It comes in a ton of different colors, a ton of different finishes. I think they have done this in full leather, but you'll most often see this in nylon or corduroy. And while I don't think that these two bags are necessarily comparable, I don't think they'll add the same facet to your collection. I still think this is a great bag to have in your collection. So I did end up returning the nylon version just because I felt that it was way too comparable to this. And I didn't love the fact that the nylon version came with 
a canvas strap. I think that was my least favorite part about that bag. I could have put up with the nylon finish, but I felt that the canvas strap just made it look and feel a little bit less well put together and I didn't feel that it was quite as luxurious as this version. But anyway, going back to the sizes, there are two sizes in the leather range and then there is the additional size of the Banana 2, which is only available in nylon. Now, one thing that I appreciated about the nylon version is how lightweight it was, but the leather versions aren't much heavier either. But there are two different sizes. This is the smaller one and the one that I have here is the original slouchy banana which comes in quite a smooth leather finish. I mean there is definitely a little bit of graining to it but it is a really natural grain. The larger version was available in grained calf skin so it was slightly softer than the small banana bag. It didn't look that different from the far but I think in terms of feel the large size was a little bit softer than the small version. So this is smooth calf skin. The large one was only available in a slightly more grained calf skin. And if you're more familiar with RMS terms, this I feel is kind of, well, it's most comparable to, I would say, ever color. It's not quite as buttery as ever color. There is a little bit more structure to this but it is still a really beautiful soft leather not quite as soft as some of the leathers like ever color or ever calf that you might be accustomed to seeing from Hermes but if you would like to pick this bag up in an even softer finish something that feels a little bit more slouchy and even more effortless they do offer the small banana bag in deer skin this season I think it comes in dark brown and ivory and they have also recently introduced this in suede in black and navy, which I am a huge fan of suede. So I was going back and forth between getting this bag in the original smooth calf skin or in suede. The reason I opted for this is because I really wanted to use and abuse this bag and suede tends to be quite delicate. And you can also have a little bit of color transfer with suede depending on what color you choose to wear it with. So. I opted for the original smooth calfskin just because I felt that this would probably be a little bit longer lasting, but I am still incredibly tempted by the suede version just because I love suede so much and I love how rich and deep suede looks in black because if there is one thing that I don't really enjoy about this particular leather is that it has a little bit of sheen to it, which means that this bag doesn't look quite as black as I would want it to. It almost has kind of a grayish kind of graphite undertone to it. It's not that deep, dark, rich black that I love. I mean, it's still a black bag, obviously, but I don't think because of that sheen, depending on what light you're in, just because the way it bounces back light, it can look a little bit lighter than it actually is. But that's obviously not going to be an issue for you if you don't wear as much black as I do. But since I mainly buy black bags, I can definitely tell the difference between the different shades of black. So if you want to go for a true, deep, dark, rich black, then I would suggest picking this bag up in suede. If you don't mind a little bit of a graphite hue or more of an onyx hue, this I don't think is something that you will not enjoy, but I still wanted to point that out since we are trying to discuss all the pros and cons of this particular bag. And while we are on the topic of color, the hardware color is silver. I mean, there isn't that much hardware. You only have this fastening that you can adjust the strap with here, which does spell out row on the side in a really subtle way. And then you have a single zip closure, which is also silver. And since we are discussing branding, there obviously isn't too much visible branding. Not that you wouldn't spot this back from a mile away if you're familiar with the row and luxury fashion. It is definitely a really eye-catching shape, but in terms of heavy branding, the only branding that you have on this bag, which is by no means heavy, is the little row sign on the fastening. And then this was one of my favorite details when I, when I saw this online, this blind stamp branding. 
I just knew I had to get this bag. It does have the blind stamp on the bottom of the flap and it just says the row underneath that. I don't think they have the same detail. In fact, I'm sure they don't have this detail on the nylon version because the nylon version doesn't actually have this little lip around the zip. Instead, it just has a really subtle tag on the inside with the branding on it but then you have this lip around the zip which does make this bag a lot easier to use because your zip will never get caught on a scarf or in your jacket or on your blazer and then the way to get into this bag is to open the zip and i will share everything that you can fit into this bag but before we do that, I wanted to let you know that there is no lining in the leather version. There are no pockets, there are no dividers. I think online they do say that it is suede lined, but I don't think that this is an actual lining. I think it is just the, the flip side of the leather. It doesn't feel like actual lining, but I haven't had any issues with the leather transferring onto anything that I had in this bag or it's rubbing off on anything. So that wouldn't be an issue, but just keep in mind, especially if you want to pick it up in a larger size, which as I mentioned is a lot larger, there are no dividers and there are no pockets in here, but this bag actually fits quite a lot. In fact, a surprising amount. So I show you everything that I have in this bag. I'm going to go to run some errands after this video. So I have, an umbrella in here it fits an umbrella or a water bottle i have my card holder in here a small card holder from laura piana i have some sunglasses in here in like a soft soft case i wouldn't put a hard case in here but sunglasses or glasses definitely fit in here really easily i have my airpods in here and then let me see what else I have two more things in here. I have my favorite RMS lip balm and I have some mints and that's it. All of this fits really easily in here because you know, you wouldn't think that you can fit a lot in here, perhaps because of this weird shape, but because it has this angle, which is of course what the name is inspired by. The row says that it is shaped like a banana. There is a lot more that you can fit in here than you would think. And another important detail to mention here is that there is an additional piece of leather stitched into the bag, which actually gives the bag a lot more dimension and a lot more give because I looked at a bag that has kind of a similar shape from Bottega that I really like the look of, but that is a bag that basically just features two flat sheets of leather that are stitched around the edges. So you can really not pack those kinds of bags. It's kind of the same thing with the Uniqlo bag, whereas this one does have this additional layer here, which gives this bag a lot more dimension and a lot more body. So if you want to pack this, you can because it really nicely expands, but if you don't, it will really just beautifully collapse in on itself. So you can actually fit a lot in here. I just wanna put everything back in here just so you can see what it looks like. It doesn't look overwhelming or it doesn't start bursting at the seams. There genuinely is a lot that you can put into this bag and I feel like I could fit even more in here if I really wanted to. I have used this bag to go to the gym. I can fit a pair of shorts and even a t-shirt in here. The one thing that will not go in here if I put my shorts and my t-shirt that I work out in is I cannot fit a water bottle in here, but I can always just carry that in my hand. But yeah, this bag actually fits a surprising amount. Now, if you want something that fits even more, perhaps if you are a mom and you're looking for a hands-free bag, but there's a lot more that you need with you on a regular basis, if you're gonna use this bag as a travel bag or a bag that you take to work and you commute with, you might want to opt for the larger version, the large banana bag, which fits. I have never owned that bag, but I do think that it would fit I mean, at least three times as much as the small version does. You could even use that as a travel bag. So, you know, you do have options, but the small one I think would be perfect if you're looking for a bag just to run errands with, because it might be a small bag, but it is an actual functional small bag. And one more thing that you will really appreciate about this bag is how lightweight it is, because even with everything in here, this bag, honestly, I mean, it weighs nothing, which is probably because it doesn't have a lining, because there are no pockets on the inside, because there isn't any substantial hardware, but it is an incredibly lightweight bag. So again, if you're looking for a really practical, functional, really easy grab and go bag, this is a great one to look into because even though it will not 
change your life. It's not one of those bags that would downgrade an outfit. I'm thinking of things like the Evelyn here, which yes, those are also really practical bags, but I think there is something really sporty, casual, and just really basic about them. Whereas this is one of those bags that will, when you see this bag, you will have a hard time taking your eyes off of it. I don't know why that is, but there is something unbelievably luxurious about this bag. I mean, I've had this bag get taken off of my shoulder at RMS by an advisor because they were so blown away by it. They wanted to know more. I've got compliments on this bag. When I went grocery shopping, I have been stopped at stores and was asked about this bag. So I guess the proof is in the pudding. There definitely is something really special about this bag. And I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I'm incredibly happy to have this in my collection. Now, when it comes to styling, obviously it is kind of inspired by a belt bag, but it's not something that you can wear as an actual belt bag. The only ways to carry it is either as a shoulder bag. So you can put this over one shoulder. You can use this as a crossbody bag because the strap is actually adjustable. So I think the strap ranges between 85 and 105 centimeters. I find it to be the perfect strap length. Or you can of course grab the straps like this and just carry it as a handheld bag. I think there is something just so effortless and beautiful about this piece that I'm incredibly happy to finally have this in my collection. Now obviously if you don't want to spend this kind of money because this bag I think is over $2,000 at this point in the small size. I think the smooth calf skin and the suede version are the same price. The deer skin is slightly more expensive, but it is still, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Do I think it's worth it for what it adds to your collection and how often I have been able to use it? I do think so, but you have to look at your own collection and you have to kind of keep in mind your lifestyle and whether or not this is really a bag that you would be able to take advantage of on a regular basis. But I have been really impressed by how much I can use it and how beautifully it's made and also how much it has added to my collection, but it is still an over $2,000 bag, which I think is worth it. But again, you have to think about your own lifestyle before pulling the trigger and especially considering that there are some pretty good dupes out there. So as I have mentioned, you can buy that back from the Uniqlo, which again, I don't think will add the same character to your collection, but it's just an amazing bag to have. Cause does a really similar bag to this in leather, which again, is not going to be completely identical, but it is a step closer to this one. And if you have never owned a belt bag like this, if you have never had a shape quite like this in your collection, and you're not sure whether or not it's something you could actually take advantage of, you could definitely start with the bag from Cause. You could give it a try. I'll try to link it down below for you. If it's still in stock, because I know that it goes in and out of stock, you could play around with that one and really test if this is a shape that you would use often enough to justify the price. And if you feel like, yep, it's something that I am getting my money's worth out of, then you could upgrade to the actual banana bag from the row if you can find this in stock, which I think is the perfect segue into discussing some of the pros and cons of this bag. And the first con is definitely how difficult this bag is to get just because it's so popular. You can find some of these in stock every now and again, but if you are looking for a specific color, a specific finish, or a specific leather, you might have to wait for it just a tiny bit. Again, I will try to link some that are currently in stock down below for you, but you can also look on the pre-loved market. You just want to make sure that you are familiar with, you know, the raw bags enough to make sure that the bag that you get on the pre-loved market is indeed authentic because it's not really a bag that you could have authenticated by someone professionally. So you can definitely look on the pre-loved market because these bags have been around for a few years, but I would suggest that you do your due diligence and you do a ton of research before buying one of these bags on the pre-loved market. But again, if I can find some of these in stock, I will make sure to have them linked down below for you. But that is definitely a big con. You never know what and when you'll find these bags in terms of what I mean, what colors and what sizes you're going to find them in. But I do think that it is worth the wait. Another con is that there is no lining, even though I have not had any issues with it. I did want to point it out because some people like their backs to be 
just a little bit easier to organize, but there are, there is no lining in this. There are no pockets on the inside. You could definitely take a little pouch and use that as an organizer in this bag. But one thing you want to keep in mind, at least when it comes to the small banana bag, is that if you're going to put something like the bullet pouch in here to make this bag look and feel a little bit more tidy, it is going to steal some of your precious real estate, which leads us into the last con, which is that you will have to compromise when it comes to how much you can fit into this bag. I mean, it is an incredibly spacious bag as far as small bags go, but it is not going to fit everything and the kitchen sink. So sometimes you will have to compromise. So if you want to put an umbrella in here, you might have to take something else out. As I mentioned, when I take this back to the gym, I'm able to fit my shorts and my t-shirt in here, but then a water bottle doesn't fit. So, you know, it is still a small bag at the end of the day. It does pack a punch in terms of how much you can fit in here. And you can definitely pack this even more than I did, but still it is a small bag but you of course always have the option of the nylon version, which is slightly bigger, well, quite a bit bigger. And then there is even a larger size, which is of course the large size. But I do feel that the pros outweigh some of these cons. So let me sum up some of the pros. The first one is how unbelievably understated this bag is, yet there is something quite luxurious about it. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I couldn't tell you how many compliments I have received on this bag. It is also unbelievably lightweight. I mean, for a full leather bag, it is unbelievably light. I like the fact that there is a zip closure, which makes it quite safe. So if you live in a big city or if you travel a lot and safety is a concern for you, you can be assured that there is a really nice zip closure in here, which will keep this bag nice and safe. And you also have this lip detail, which makes it a lot easier to use. I feel like a lot of thought and effort was put into the creation of this bag. They thought of a lot of different details like the strap length, it being adjustable, the zip, the zip is really smooth. And then it also has this lip detail, which not only makes the bag a lot safer, but it also makes it easier for you to use and it prevents anything getting stuck on the zip. So that is another detail that I really appreciate, appreciate about this bag. It's practical, but it also looks great. And I personally think that it is quite reasonably priced for how much use I have been able to get out of this bag already. And this is not a bag that will ever go out of style or something that I feel I would get tired of. So this is really just a great wardrobe staple as long as you like a more simplistic, smaller, casual grab and go bag, but one that will actually elevate and enhance an outfit instead of taking away from it. But before I let you guys go, there were a couple of questions that I got on Instagram about this bag that I wanted to address really quick. So the first one that we have not touched on is the raw leather versus Hermes leather. I guess we did talk about this earlier. So I would personally compare this to Evercolor or Evercalf. It's not quite as buttery as Evercolor or Evercalf. It's a little bit more dense and a little bit more sturdy, which I actually think is a good thing. I mean, it doesn't feel quite as luxurious. It's still a beautiful leather, but it's not quite as buttery as ever color or ever calf. But I do think it's a good thing when it comes to a bag that you want to use on a regular basis, something you want to throw on and not worry about too much. So I am really quite impressed by the leather. Was the quality of the craftsmanship like worth the hype? I do think that it is really nicely made. It feels really sturdy. You can tell that a lot of thought and effort was put into the creation of this bag. And overall, I do think that it is just an unbelievably luxurious bag. And it really speaks for itself because, you know, when it comes to such an understated simple design you do have to craft it beautifully for it to actually do something for you so i think the fact that it's so often complimented and i feel like it adds so much to an outfit speaks volumes about how beautifully it's made are you able to fit quite a bit of items in the bag even with the odd shape of the bag i think the odd shape actually helps me put more in here so yes you can definitely fit a ton in this bag Okay, odd question, does it soften up? In store slash photos, it can look quite stiff. I do think that it has gotten a little bit softer 
since I bought it, but if you are looking for something that is even more slouchy, which why wouldn't you considering that it's called the slouchy banana, I would suggest opting for either the deer skin or the suede version. I mean, this is still really quite soft, but there is definitely a little bit more body to this bag than the deer skin or the suede version. And you can also get the suede version in a true black, which will look a little bit richer than the smooth calfskin wood. And I think everything else, small versus large, pros and cons, these are things we have touched on, what fits inside, how you style it, does it compare to the quality of Hermes, what color would you go for, what leather, yeah, I think all of these we have touched on. So I guess this brings us to the end of today's video discussing everything that there is to know about the Rose Iconic Banana Bag. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Is this a bag that you would ever consider? Have you considered this bag? Have you looked at it? I cannot wait to hear what you have to say about this bag. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching. And if there are any other bags you'd like to hear my thoughts on, make sure to leave those in the comment section too. And I will see you back here with a new video really, really soon.